Hi guys, before we get into this week's episode, I just want to share a little bit of a teaser trailer for a brand new audio drama podcast. The Timekeeper is a four episode long series that follows 17 year old Charlie and his friends Gamma and Zoe as they are pulled into a life and death version of a video game called 13 Keys. This stars Jude Lewis from The Babysitter, um, which is an amazing movie. Go and check that out as well. Uh, Chan McKinney as well from Pretty Little Lies Original Sin. And Arjun Affley as Gamma, who is in the rebooted version of Are You Afraid of, Are you afraid of the Dark? And Just Beyond. Go and check this out. The first two episodes are alive now. And the next two episodes are out April 20th and April 27th. You could go and check this out now. It's such a great podcast. Check out the trailer now. You ever heard about Shady Pines? Research place out by Borden. The guy running it goes insane. Locks everyone inside. Sets the whole place on fire. Burns them all alive. What does that have to do with the game? The game is Shady Pines. Good, I, I was scared there for a second with the lightning and the creepy murder ghost game. Just pause it. There is no pause. There is play or do not play. I stop playing, clock starts ticking. What, you have to play until you beat it? Exactly. Tim's missing. You think it has something to do with the game? Yes. No, it's just a game. How does it know who's playing? Ghosts. It's not ghosts. Then what is it? The timekeeper is always watching. The timekeeper doesn't exist. Fairchild says the people he worked with called him the timekeeper. Fairchild is dead. He takes your days. He takes your nights, and then he takes your life. He's always watching. Everyone who plays this game dies or disappears. It's just a game, G. I thought I was the only one at risk because I was the only one playing, but now I don't know. We need to get to Shady Pines and get the server back on. We have to destroy it. No one else could ever play. If you don't play, you die. And if you do play, you die. Reads. I'm your host, Mike Goddard, and this week on the podcast, we're going to be heading into the world of historical crime fiction. Uh, we all know I do love a bit of crime fiction on this podcast, sometimes more than horror. So this week's guest is a national newspaper journalist whose crime novel, The Maiden, for 2020 prize for new writers at the amazing Bloody Scotland. Welcome to the podcast this week, Kate Foster. Thank you so much for having me. No worries. Um, what we'd like to do here on Bloody Good Reads is force authors to pick three books that they absolutely love. Yeah. Because I'm a bastard like that. Um, but before we get to that point, <laughs> and before we kind of get into your career, what I'd like to ask every guest is how did you get into the crime genre? Well, um, I came into crime because I was particularly interested in in the in the story um, which my novel is is based on. And I didn't really think of it um, as a crime fiction novel when I was approaching it, I thought of it as a historical fiction novel, but it does involve um, a murder and a court case. <laughs> <laughs> so I suppose inevitably it is a crime. Um, um, and so I, I was absolutely intrigued by by the real crime behind behind my story, and that's and that's I suppose how I how I how I got into it. So, what was your kind of reading habits growing up? Was you quite an avid reader? Yeah, I mean, my my reading habits. I went from Enid Blyton uh, to to Judy Bloom pretty swiftly, mm -hmm. um, and I probably didn't really start reading uh, crime books until probably I was a bit a bit older, and I and I liked to read um, Ian Ian Rank, and I think that was kind of where I, where I first got into it. That's but I would say that I. My reading, I mean, I, I'm not kind of dictated by genre. I think I think for me, it's just all about just a really good plot and a really good story. Which must link into kind of 
you went to be a journalist as well because you've been journalist for what, about 20 years now I on think, national I think it must be other, um, it might be 25 it might, it might it might be getting on to the 25 yeah our uh-huh, ages <laughs> was, it, was that something you always went to get into more kind of like going into university that was kind of your aim to get into journalism or was you looking to do kind of different route more of the writing side of it or media side yeah, I think I think I will. I I always like writing fiction, and I, and I, and I think that journalism is was is is a good way to use your skills if 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 you do enjoy enjoy writing. But what I found I I, I enjoyed most about my journalism, and I and I've done um, a lot of different specialisms, is I really enjoyed um, and still enjoy the process of telling people something that they didn't already know, and I think that's a real privilege and a real thrill to be able to do that. I think that fits well with kind of like a historical crime fiction, even if it wasn't aiming to do a crime novel on on this one, but yeah. kind of going into the into the history because this is quite a, an old case as well for the new book. But before we get into the into the new book, yeah, what I like to ask every guest is, <laughs> what is their three books they love? So, what is your first bloody good read? So I brought um, three books to you today. Um, two of them are historicals and one of them's modern and I think they've all got a good bit of um, darkness to them. Um, the first book is a historical fiction novel called The Sin Eater by Megan Campisi. Now this is an alternative um, uh, historical fiction book which is set in a, a, a reimagined 16th century England um, which is just like Elizabethan England but everybody's got a slightly different name uh, so it's really it's really interesting to kind of get your head around it's, it's, it's quite it's quite a dy- dystopian place and it tells the story of a, a, a young woman called May who is forced to become a sin eater now these were real people um, uh, who were uh, given the job of when when somebody was on their deathbed they were given the job of, of listening to the person's confessions and um, eating, um, it, it was actually a piece of bread, and that and that that absolved the person <laughs> of their sins before they died. I'm not quite sure how, but <laughs> but, but bread fixes all. <laughs> <laughs> really interesting concept. But um, in this in this reimagining, there are there are different foods which are attached to different sins. For example, um, if the person has is, is confessing adultery, then the sin eater um, will, will eat raisins. If the person is confessing betrayal, then the sin eater will eat a mutton chop. I think these sin eaters got pretty big. Um, but, and, they were, and they were really kind of cast out of society, these people. They were, I, think, I think they weren't allowed to speak. Um, and they were kind of branded and they wore a collar so everybody knew who they were. And they lived on the edges of society. Um, and so um, um, May, um, she she's forced to become this because she commits a crime and this is her kind of alternative punishment. And she actually, um, so the story goes that she ends up in the royal court um, hearing um, the the last kind of confessions of, of, of some of the people in the royal court um, and she gets embroiled um, or she or she witnesses something which is a is is a conspiracy when um, in fact one of the items which is placed on the coffin for her to eat is a is the heart of a deer and that represents the sin of having committed a murder uh, but she knows that a murder was not uh, committed in this person's life. So there's a great kind of conspiracy which then unravels. Okay. And the book is written in a very kind of atmospheric, beautiful way um, and um, and such great character which comes out in the writing. That sounds really good. <laughs> that, that, <laughs> right. Really good, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, that, that sounds really cool. And, and it's got that kind of that kind of dark element to it that crime element to it and, oh yeah, uh, it's, it's, got, yeah. It's got everything and I think what's interesting about historical novels is I think I think sometimes when we think about crime we, we you know we do we do think about modern fiction quite a lot but I think mm. historical novels can can give us such a wonderful um range of crimes to look at as well mm. we, I've seen a lot of kind of historical fiction coming up now you mm. didn't see as much of it kind of before but you're getting a lot more kind of historical crime coming yeah. in, which is nice to see really really nice to see great choice and uh definitely one i'm definitely going to pick up it can get it on kindle for 3.99 at the moment so if, if oh that's really can. good yeah so go pick that up now you have no excuse it's 3.99 
Cheap another coffee. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. So where did the idea for your brand new book? So the brand new book, The Maiden, um, yeah. is based on, like I said, a historical um, case. Yeah, based real, on a real event, yeah. So where did the idea for the, for the book come about? And tell us a little bit about the new book. So I um so the maiden is based on the true story of a Scottish uh woman um called Christian Nimmo, who was um who was condemned to death for murdering her lover, um Lord James Forrester. And this 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 murder um happened um in the village that I grew up in, which is a village called Kerstorfen, which is not really a village, but it was then. Uh, now it's a it's a it's a suburb of Edinburgh, so it's kind of halfway between Edinburgh Airport and the, the city centre. Those of people will will be familiar with this part of Edinburgh if they've ever visited. Um, so I grew up there, and um, this the story of the murder of of James Forrester is part of Christophan's kind of heritage, um, and the ghost of Christian Nemo is said to haunt the spot of the crime, which was in those days um, on the outskirts of Christophan Castle, which doesn't exist anymore, but there was a sycamore tree um, in the location. Um, and that sycamore tree stood until the 1990s. It was a huge, um, huge emblem, and, it, and it's still part of the, you know, kind of, kind of one of the symbols of Christophan now. So when I was a child um, growing up, and I and I thought that Christian Nemo's ghost was was haunting the sycamore tree, I was I was nervous. I was nervous, and I thought and I thought you know I wouldn't I wouldn't walk past it without without thinking that she was going to come out and get me. So I was really terrified of this spooky spooky ghost, and um and she has this kind of reputation as being kind of um of like a vengeful you know a woman scorned you know uh, you know that has all these kind of um characteristics associated with her her reputation and she's she's quite a notorious uh, figure. Um, when I was, I came back to Gerstorfen um, a few years ago and I remembered um, the story and I realised I wasn't frightened of her anymore and I, I thought about why I wasn't frightened of her and it was because I, I, I thought that she probably um, had not killed her lover because she was this kind of terrifying woman but that there may have been some kind of backstory involved. And I was really interested in looking at that when I explored the case. Um, he was her lover, but he was also her uncle by marriage. And there would probably have been, I think, come, you know, it, it would have been quite a toxic relationship. So I was just fascinated in reimagining um, them as a couple, um, looking at that from a much more modern view. And I also wanted to um, look at other characters who may have been alive at that time, um, 17th century Edinburgh was just an absolutely um, fascinating place and uh, just coming out of the plague not not a place to really um, that you would want to live in so I um, introduced or invented um, one or two more characters who I thought would be really interesting um, people to be involved in a murder plot and one of them is a is, is a prostitute who is called Violet and she um, escapes um uh, a brothel in Edinburgh's High Street. Uh, I didn't know whether there were any brothels in Edinburgh's High Street because it's not part of Edinburgh's history, but I just <laughs> kind of imagined that as well. Okay. So there must have been a lot of research going into this then. I mean, how, how long did it take you to kind of research the time and research kind of her her history? Well, you know, with Christian Nimmo, there's not really a lot. Um, the, the, she's not one of the big sort of Edinburgh ghosts. You know, she's not she's not a big Scottish figure. So I did, um, I did some research and I could sort of stopped because I thought I'm not writing a historical um, textbook here, you yeah, know, yeah. and I, I was really just giving an emotional reaction to, to, to what I'd kind of, um, to what, to what her reputation was. Um, most of my research really came in things like, oh my goodness, historicals are so difficult. You know, what were they wearing? What were they eating? What were they drinking? You know, mm. had, you know, had they, you know, had, you know, has coffee come over yet you know things like this so yeah, yeah. Um, it's really really difficult to kind of um get people to do things um and that i think that was the hardest part of it but also the most enjoyable i mean i just i mean like you know you kind of go down a rabbit hole don't you of thinking mm -hmm. well you know what and what you know and 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 and, and you know and what um and how and how long were their dresses and what kind of shoes did they have so um so really just really enjoyed kind of layering all that up but then trying to also then write it quite lightly so that the, my readers weren't sort of 
um, becoming um, overwhelmed with historical facts and just trying to, you know, let let the plot shine. But it's nice to have those extras in there as well. It gives that kind of authenticity to it, which which is nice. A lot of people do miss that out, so it's nice to have that in this book as well. So yeah, it's a. Uh... Yeah, yeah, I, it's, it's nice. yeah. I, I I did try to strike to strike that balance. Um, Edinburgh, I think, is such an interesting place. It can become a character, um, in its you know because of its setting, and I and I try to kind of make Edinburgh a character in the in the book. And it's a, it's a, got a good history of of, uh, of crime fiction in in Edinburgh and Scotland as well. So some of the best best crime come does come from that area. So yeah, I know. yeah. brilliant. Okay, so that is out. So by the time this podcast comes out, we are looking at it'll be out next Thursday because it's coming out. Oh yeah, yeah, seconds. that's true. So, yeah. 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 yeah, So it'll be just 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 before you know, it'll be, it comes out this week. Do go and pick it up. You can get it in Waterstones, Amazon, any, anywhere, anywhere um, foils. Yeah, whatever oh, what, you know, just what, whatever your favorite bookshop is. But no, any, anyway, you can get a book from great and Pam McMillan. What a great starting publisher for you as well. It's, they they do such great fiction. Yeah, it's, in the crime, crime. Been, it's been. I think I've you know I've been incredibly fortunate with 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 how the journey's gone. I think from from winning um, Pitch Perfect, everything went um, amazingly well, um, and I think that Bloody Scotland um, is such a fantastic festival in terms of giving new writers a showcase. And I was able to, to, to do that. I actually did it in lockdown. I, I didn't go there. Um, and it was just so, I was just so lucky just to be able to kind of, you know, have have, have my story heard in that way. And Lynn does, Lynn's done a really good job on, on the festival. We've had Lynn Anderson on here before, um, mm-hmm. talking about Bloody Scotland. It's such a great event. I wish one day to go up, to come up, up north and, uh, and come and, take part in this well i've not i've not been um i've not been because it always clashes with work but i'm mm-hmm. going to hopefully go go this year i would definitely make a point of going going this year we have a great way to promote the book as well so mm-hmm. definitely yeah. um, i need to ask uh what is your second bloody good read i'm recommending a book called the mercies by an author called karen millwood hargrave now this is um this is a witch a witch lit book. Um, uh, which which witchcraft is 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 really making um making um a lot a lot of waves just now in terms of f- fiction books. Um, there's been um lots of um writers re-examining how how women were you know were tried for the crime of of, of witchcraft. Um, not just in the UK but in other in other countries um as well. Um, the Mercies um, is 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 another historical novel set in the seventeenth century, um, and it's inspired by um, a, a real a real event, which was um, a storm, which happened um, just off the coast of Norway, um, that actually wiped out forty um, forty men, forty local fishermen, and um, it was blamed on uh, local women, some of you know who who were you know who were there. Know, wives, etc., who were then who were then tried as witches. So um, it's a story about about the witch trials, but there's also um, there are some strong strong you know other strong themes as well. There's a, I know a love a love story in there as well. It's a really it's one of those books, I, and I um, I'm one of those people that I'll I'll pick up a book and I'll and I'll look at the first page and I'll know immediately whether I'm going to love that book or not. And it's really almost in the first two or three sentences. And and The Mercies was 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 one of those ones. Just the writing was so sharp and so clean and I immediately was was sold. Um so I would I would recommend that for you know for readers who who just like to get hooked on a really strong strong story like that. It's always good to have a, a strong, hard hit first chapter. I mean, I I I'll get so many books doing this podcast because I've got so many different people. It's so hard to start off, but it's always the first hard hitting chapters that kind of make you want to read after I've interviewed the author as well. <laughs> but uh, cool, it's a good one. It mixes up with the crime and, and a little bit of horror in a way because witchcraft and uh, witchcraft. I would trials. say horror. I mean, yeah. I would say there's 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 there's. I would say there are some some really quite chilling chilling moments in that. Mm-hmm in that in that book um uh you know i would say it's a dark you know you know it has some really quite dark themes cool 
So that is also available on Kindle and in paperback over yeah. on Amazon as well and in all good bookshops, obviously. So, yeah. uh, no, get that, get that trick. I love the cover. <laughs> I do. That cover. cover is lovely. I mean, I've mm. I think this had a maybe had a couple of covers, but I mean, I just I just love the cover of that. Definitely uh, awesome. So yeah, another brilliant pick as well. So after the maiden, uh, is there anything you're working on coming up? Is there any other projects that you're looking at? So yeah, so I'm writing my 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 second book. It's another Scottish historical, and I'm trying to think about whether it's crime or I, th- I think definitely more horror <laughs> more horror than crime oh, there's, there's, a strong, <laughs> there's a strong witchcraft element in there as well and um it gets it gets pretty it gets pretty dark actually so i'm, I'm having um I, i'm really enjoying writing it and um, it, it's really challenging i think writing your first book you've got so much energy to put into it and because you don't quite know what's going to happen with it and you've got so much stuff you just want to say um, and then when it comes to your second book, you think, well, I've, just, but I've said it, but I've said it all now. Um, so um, I, I found it a different type of challenge. Um, I, I know I can complete a book so that, you know, I don't, I'm not worried about that. It's more just finding the time. It's, it's keeping things at a good pace. And it's and it's just trying to find us, you know, just find that different story in there. So um, I'm I'm enjoying I am you know I'm going back to sort of sixteenth century, absolutely loving the research on that as well and wondering what people are wearing, and what they've got on their feet, <laughs> <laughs> which is the most important thing. Because <laughs> there's people out there who will point that out. <laughs> yeah, they will. Awesome. So that's a great one for obviously the horror fans of the podcast and the crime fans of the podcast. So yeah, um, yeah. yeah, there's yeah. I mean, it's yeah, it starts off. You know, there's quite a difficult opening scene, and things only get worse. So, <laughs> which is how we like it here in the podcast. Yeah. <clears throat> so, now to the final pick. So, what is your your final bloody good read? So, I'm um, I'm coming I'm coming up now to this um to this century. <laughs> <laughs> dumped forward in time. So my 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 third pick is is by um, an author that I've I've worked with. She was my one of my mentors when I was writing the maiden, um, her her novel is called The Death of Bees, and it's by Lisa O'Donnell, who is a Scottish author, and this is a contemporary, um, contemporary fiction book. Um, is it crime fiction? I'm not. I'm not sure. I think it definitely. Yes, there's. Yes, there's crime in it. It's. It. It tells the story of 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 two girls, um, whose parents are drug addicts, and they both die the mum and dad die um within 24 hours of each other and the girls um decide to bury their parents in their back garden to avoid going into foster care so it's really it's really, like nice. <laughs> it's really dark um mm. and there are some moments that i think that memorable moment is when they're bringing their dad's body down the stairs and he's kind of leaking a little bit um on the on and they have to pull the carpet up um but it, it's written with such i mean I, I think what i like what, what i loved about about the death of bees is the character so it's narrated you know by two or three different characters but um both of the girls take turns to narrate and there it's just this wonderful kind of sing song you know um 15 year old teenager you know narrating the story who's just had an absolutely catastrophic life and it's mm-hmm. how she kind of um moves forward from that and and it's just i mean it, it you know it really it really would break your heart but it's absolutely beautifully beautifully written um, and it's just a great scottish um S- scottish book so you're describing it i'm thinking um was factory i've got that kind of same kind of feel when you're describing it um that kind of like dark gothic kind of feeling but like kind of horror yeah. edge but not it's on that edge of horror it's on the edge of, I mean, definitely on the edge but it's also just absolutely it's, it's written with such a light touch mm. um that you and it's a very short book it's not you know you're not sitting there for ages it's quite it's, it's quite a short book um and so it does yeah it's just that it's very seductive and it's one again it's one of those books where when you read the first page, I think that that's you in. I mean, she. I think um, one of the things that I I was taught by Lisa O'Donnell is is that whole concept. Um, is that you know you really do have to kind of get 
get the reader hooked. They, they, they should really know what, what your book's about within the first, you know, kind of couple of pages. Mm-hmm. And and The Death of Bees does that in about like three sentences. So um, so absolutely recommend that one. There's a line on, because I'm looking at Amazon while I'm talking to you, there's a line, today is Christmas Eve, today is my birthday, yeah. it's down 15, today I buried my parents in the backyard, and then we're beloved. That is the abs. I mean, to me, that's just as kind of like a masterclass on, yeah. on 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 how to get everything into you know a couple of paragraphs. And yeah, that's a really famous. Um, well, not really famous. It's it's a, it's a, it's, a, it's a really good um example of that of, mm. of what I'm talking about and of what I tried to do with the maiden was just to, uh, just to get kind of the whole kind of concept of the novel in, on, into page one. Oh, amazing i'm definitely picking this up i do love the sound of this one i uh, yeah so, i mean i think i think i, I think it's absolutely worth it yeah it's four nights out of in kindle 1265 is a weird price for a paperback yeah, but 1265 yeah. for a paperback and nine pound 14 for a hardcover yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> what yeah. weird mixture of prices over there over there on amazon but go and check this one out it sounds amazing yeah. it's on my list it's going to be on my kindle in five minutes <laughs> 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 awesome picks no, three really, really good picks. Thank and... you. Do you know, I was, I was really struggling because I thought, you know, um, I just tried to give you books that I love mm. rather than trying to fit into a certain, you know, what somebody else might like. So mm. I've kind of gone for the heart. Um, and these are all books which have been, um, none of them are, you know, they're not out this year. No, they're all, they're all, um, well, well, The Death of Bees is, is, is the oldest by far, but certainly within the past sort of two, two to three years, I think the other, the other two. Mm. So, um, you know, there's certainly enough reviews of them around, I think, on places like Goodreads, etc. So have to have a good, a good look at what they're about. Everybody has their own interpretation of the meaning of your three books that you absolutely love. Yeah. And we've had some, strange picks <laughs> um yeah. sean hudson was the strangest one he was he's picking historical kind of non-fiction saying he didn't he writes horror but doesn't really kind of read much horror and we've had walking books on here we've had um books mm. from childhood um, yeah so yeah, it, it's, yeah. it's nice to see each author's interpretation of, of the question and it's great to get people to share their love of books which is what we love to do absolutely and I love having crime authors on because crime author, we don't get as many crime authors in as, as horror, and I'm a big old crime fan and a horror fan um, on, on occasion. Yeah. And it's nice to get some mixtures. Well, absolutely. And I think, I think, I think crime can, you know, I think, I mean, I kind of struggled with labeling myself as a crime author because I, I don't see myself as a hard boiled, you know, um, <laughs> plotter. In that in that way, and I and I think, but I think when you look at l- l- loads of stories, have got crime themes in them, mm. you know. And That's horror. why we always say crime and horror is such a thin line between the two. They mm. kind of, both genres kind of on the edge. It's 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 a shame we can't have you know a mixture of both of the fans coming together into one big middle middle genre, but you know. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Awesome. Brilliant. Thank you so much for coming on the podcast. It's been amazing talking to you. Um, go and pick up a copy of The Maiden. It's coming out on the 27th of April. Um, don't get Kate confused with the other Kate that's on, on Google. Just go by the link I'm going to put in the description below. <laughs> we had the conversation before we've recorded. Um, yes, but yeah, go and check it out. Two, two Kate Fosters who are authors, but my, I think it's I'm the one who's written The Maiden. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Not pause. <laughs> But awesome, thank you again so much for coming on the podcast. Where can people find you if you'd like to be found? <laughs> if you'd like to be found. Um, <laughs> you can find me on Twitter at Kate Foster Media or um, you can find me on Instagram at Kate Foster Author. Awesome. To go and pick up a couple of the book now. Um, go and pre-order it now, sorry. Or if you listen to the after 27th, go and buy one now. Um, as always, a huge shout out to our sponsor as well, Bonnable Book Club. They're the UK's best and biggest UK horror and thriller book box service. I can get that right one day. <laughs> Bringing the wonders of point bookshop straight to your door each month. You can either get the Full Guts Box, which is a brand new book, either a crime, horror, or thriller title, uh, a possibly haunted second hand book, and a, another indie title, mostly now. We don't ever get magazines in there as much anymore. 
you also get a selection of hot drinks you get a selection of they get a snack you get some amazing bookmarks in there with some short fiction from the guys who run the book box and also um I think we've got a canvas bag in there before which is amazing i'm using that now for my shopping um badges amazing key rings as well on, on occasion so go and check them out if you don't want all the bits just want the books don't blame you books are awesome go and check out the bare bones box as well you can get 10 percent off your first box by using the code bloody good reads at checkout um go to a bonable book club at createjoy.com in the description below and yeah go and uh, go and get some amazing books from them as always, you can catch me over on Twitter at Bloody Good Reads. You can catch me over on Instagram at Bloody Good Reads and over at the Facebook group as well, the Bloody Good Reads group. Now, was 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 the was the um the book club? It's now just the Bloody Good Reads group where authors are sharing their books and make some recommendations there. And also check out our monthly podcast, Bloody Good Screen Movie Club, where myself, Chloe, Nard, and Marcus review two films, normally horror. Um. Apart from the next episode, which is going to be the uh, Great Budapest Hotel. But it is Nar's birthday, so we let him have that. But as always, a huge thank you for listening to the podcast. Do like, share, and subscribe wherever you get your podcast. And uh, yeah, get in touch. See who you, you know, give, give us your free bloody good reads. And I've been your host, Mike Goddard, and I'll see you next time.